Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. So I get to do this secret estate sale shopping because I've known the people for years and they're going to try to deal with it this way as much as possible. So anyway, they gave me the key and said, just go in and take a look and see what you like. And I like this mirror right away. Let's see if it's plastic or if it's, yeah, it's light, but I think it's light wood. It's a lot lighter than it looked. Hey, look, it's me. Hi. <laughs> okay. So then there's these crazy like 1990s era studio ceramic tea sets you know i see people buying these i don't know who m mata is as a ceramicist so i guess that might be something to look up and at least i can tell them these berger chairs are nice these are french walnut and they look like they're early 20th century. They're a little worn, but nowadays people like that. If they don't have actual holes in them, people like things to look a little more time-worn. This is something I would like to have. This little table is a Mexican tile top because the Mexican tiles are not usually quite as detailed as the Californian. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those are Mexican. but. They're still really neat. They're from the 1920s and 30s when patio living really took off. You can't really see the legs, but I think I might just buy it so you'll get to see it then. I also like this factice for Carolina Herrera. It's not that old, but I like factices. There's some 40s glass, a nice crystal lamp. Those actually do seem to be selling. The crystal glass is a little harder. The bowl in the corner there has got strange little divots coming off of it. It looks like it could be Murano, maybe? This is the first time I've seen this place, so we will just have to find out here. Got to climb around some furniture. All right. Let's see here. It's hand-blown, and it's really heavy. Huh. You know, that actually is a messy enough pontal, but it's a little fire polish, so... I don't know that I would say Blanco. I'm thinking maybe hmm, Bischoff or Greenwich Flintcraft. I don't know. It's really super heavy. I'll have to look that up. Maybe I'll uh, send the picture to Blanco Bill and see what he says. So the mantle stuff here is hand-painted. This looks like it's probably Bavarian. Yes. No, French. Nice little French hand-painted set here. And these little figures are something made of resin. It's not for me. It's too new. I realize that some people make a lot of money on resale, buying things that are a lot newer than what I care for and know about. And, you know, that's great. It's a, it's a real thing, and it's a good business for them. Okay, this fish here is angelfish, and it's Blue Mountain Pottery, and I like Blue Mountain, and I like angelfish. It'd be a good piece for Florida, so I think I'm going to make an offer on that one. Little wall pocket is maybe American Bisque. It's not McCoy, I don't believe. It's cute with the wagon wheel, very 50s. Behind here is a print that I really like. And I think I'm going to make an offer on this, too, because it says bar hounds. And there they are, all hanging out at the bar. This is from the early 60s or mid-60s when cocktail culture was a big deal. I really like that piece. I have a lot of people who collect bar stuff. I do, too. And I have a hunch that that would be a good seller. And then here we've got a Telecron clock. This is... A modern looking piece probably from about 1970 I could see where that would have appeal perhaps to a modernist although clocks are not necessarily a big deal these days unless they're advertising clocks because everybody uses devices now that's a very neat mid-century shape for a lamp and a good fiberglass shade I have to say that's tempting 
and Mickey Mouse behind here is a push button. I like the rotary ones if you can find them. Looks like Cousin It on the stand there. Hand painted little hamper. And this guy here, is this a Yadro? Boy, the light's not really great in here. Hopefully this will turn out okay. It is indeed a Yadro, and you know, Yadro sells for me in Florida, and I do have uh, more shows in Florida this winter, so that is a possibility. The polar bears don't really go for all that much, but they're cute and people like them, so they sell pretty easily. This floor lamp here from the 30s is very stately and rather handsome and a really nice piece. Uh, a lot of people like these. They have a Hollywood Regency feel to them because of the way the shade goes up. I wonder if this is plugged in. I really should show you this lit. There we go. Much better. In fact, that's better for everything, I hope. Anyhow, so this is the lamp. 1930s with the marble base. Sometimes people freak out and think they need to be rewired, but the plug really is very clearly good on this one. I would not touch it if it were me. I'll show you what it looks like so you can see that it's not scary. It doesn't have any wires sticking out. It's not frayed at all. Um, you know, plug these things into a surge protector before you plug them into the wall if you're not sure, and then you should be fine. I learned that because I zapped myself really badly with a piano lamp once. Uh, I mean, it was head to toe electricity, and I don't want that to ever happen again. In the Stein department, now we have Coors. These are made in Brazil by a company called Serra Martra, I think, if I'm pronouncing that right. And it's based on their old advertising. There are some collectors for them. Here's one that's Budweiser. You know, some of the beer guys like the more modern pieces. This one with the Clydesdales, that sort of thing. I have to say, I generally avoid newer steins. A uh, little marble top table. Furniture looks okay and hmm, that's a nice little walnut table under there with the inlay. You can't really see the inlay too well under that lamp, I don't think. But let's just walk around and see what this is like. Ooh, yeah, knock things on the floor. All right, again, really dark here. Sorry about that. Let me get the other side. Maybe that's better. So some sort of a fruit wood inlay. Nice little flowers. Probably from the 1950s, I would say. You see a lot of that kind of furniture in that era and even into the 60s. Think about Samantha Stevens' living room on Bewitched. They went through a few phases. At first it was very modernist, it was really cool, but then when it went to color, they suddenly changed to this really rather hideous brocade couch and it all went downhill from there. Costume jewelry looks like it's pretty run of the mill. But there are some nice applied English floral pieces here. We used to get a lot of business from Canada in the English porcelain, but we don't see it as much anymore. Wedgwood is still popular though. It seems like that continues to sell. The heart box might be a nice piece to have at Hall uh, Halloween, <laughs> Valentine's Day. Not a Freudian slip there, I promise you. Um, anyway, carrying on here. Little lamp. These are neat and I would be interested in these. Let's see. The die cut is parrots. It doesn't have any advertising or a calendar on the bottom, but the parrots are cute. These usually sell for about 10 or 15 in my world. But these are pretty good because these are a fellow named Weinhold Reese. And he did these for the Great Northern Railway. And this was for people who went to the Blackfeet Indian nation going to Glacier Park on the railroad back in the 1930s and 40s. So they show a whole bunch of people who are actual Native Americans 
in their traditional dress. And this is at a time when this sort of dress and these styles are really starting to wane in Native American culture. And so it makes it a little bit more remarkable that he was able to capture all this. He left the East Coast and went to the West Coast specifically because he was so fascinated with Native American culture. And it's cool that all of these are real people and very um, colorful and well done, but realistic interpretations. And I think we've got another one here. It's quite a large set actually. I don't know that I've seen the set together. I've always seen individual pieces. So I have to say I'm very excited about this and I see a price of $15 on it which seems really right up my alley. So there's also a bunch of matchbooks. For years people have argued over whether matchbooks should be flattened with the matches taken out of them. The answer unfortunately is no, they should not have been. Birds, <laughs> birds, butterflies, things that fly, um, <laughs> little critters under glass. Uh, these are actually popular in more tropical places that I sell. This bowl appears to be Navajo or Southwestern and has some sort of a signature I can't quite make out. Oh, and there's a nice Weller candlestick from the 1920s. There really are some antiques in this house. Apparently the occupant had her mother's things and that puts a lot of this back into the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. I have to say this print, it's Japanese, it's geisha. It looks like it's on silk and I believe it is and I assume it's a screen print. It's very delicate and looks like it would date to, uh, based on the frame, maybe the 1930s or 40s perhaps. It's really very sweet and the colors are very strong. I could imagine that being likable for somebody. And what else do we have in here? Have I missed anything? Oh, there's a lamp that I went right by that I wanted to see. Let's see. I try to be methodical and go in one direction in these places, but it's hard, especially when it's not set up and there's just stuff everywhere. This is cool, although she looks like she's in bondage, but this is actually a lamp that is a figural. And I think it's very graceful, personally. I like this quite a bit. And would definitely be interested in that piece. So yeah, I'm excited. There are some fun things in here. I can see things that other dealers will want to buy as well. There's a nice stack of nesting tables here. Nesting tables are always great for display because they don't take a lot of room, but you can pull them out and put more out if you're doing a display in a mall space or at a show. And it looks legit because that's the way people would have it in their house so it doesn't look like a big crowded mess. This bowl here is signed 1987 Lynn I can't quite make it out. Nielsen? No, that's not right. I'll have to come back with a uh, jeweler's loop, but uh, the 80s colors because of the black and gold could be a thing, especially if this is one of the Pilchuck trained artists. Being in uh, the Northwest, I've run into a lot of hill check art over the years. Let's see what's, oh, hey, is there a bathroom? There is, and it has bathroom stuff. You need to drink, this is where you go. Lots and lots of beer. Yeah, we'll just back right out of there. Too bad the lighting's better in there than everywhere else in the house, but oh well. Rolling pins. I like these little yellow stools. They usually go for about $25 for me. And they're great. Again, it's a little thing that folds up that you can take to a show and open up and it's an immediate display level until you sell it. Oh, the yellow one over here is much better though. I think I'm liking this one. If it's in good shape, I'd be sorely tempted because I haven't had one of these for a while. And the weird double T-Mobile, okay the weird double flip up uh, oh boy what a mess let's see 
it's a real estate sale folks <laughs> everything's just everywhere okay yeah so see that folds up like that yeah Ooh, I like that yeah I think I might have to have that wow this is gonna be fun I feel very fortunate getting to take a look these look like Royal Hauda pieces but they are Japanese okay Japan that looks like it's Belgian this is kind of cute with the colors and that is Czechoslovakian all from about the same era and you see where the Japanese of course are copying the Europeans and the Europeans are copying each other so sort of a cute little grouping there together it'd be fun to have in a house in a display I don't know if it's for me to resell because I already have a bunch of that sort of stuff if you have the jar having this beater if you have the green glass jar especially if it's uranium glass from the 30s is a really nice $50 bill they sell very quickly this is Metlock's Aztec this is one of their modernist patterns that isn't quite as wild as the Mobile and Freeform and Contempora but it is still a really neat pattern in fact in some ways it's my favorite of that grouping because it's a little more understated and I like the black and gray white monochrome especially right now with what's popular in decorating the old chrome toaster is a wide slot I'll bet it still works great Corel wear. Um, some Desert Rose and some other Franciscan. That doesn't really sell well for me anymore. This is some 80s dinnerware. I hear some people talk about Studio Nova and that it might be a thing. And it is very 80s. It's that sort of 80s version of 1930s kind of deco. But I actually thought it was kind of appealing at its time. Looks like there's some more etched elegant glass. There was a time I would have scarfed this up. This is a Duncan and Miller pattern, I believe. Or is it New Martinsville? I, my, I used to know all this stuff and I've just, sometimes you forget when you're not using it all the time. I love glass, but it doesn't sell as fast as it used to and I'm very particular about what I buy. Okay, now this is Duncan. This is the teardrop pattern. I always like this pattern because it's really got a deco feel even though it came out in the mid 50s. And I don't know, I just think it's likable. It's also squarish, so it actually is a little more practical. It doesn't take up a ton of room. And then I always look at pineapples because sometimes if you're really lucky, they'll be koa wood from Hawaii and then they can be worth real money. Sometimes they're teak and they're usually from the Philippines. And you know, this one actually is from Honolulu. So that's a step in the right direction. Whoops, I don't know what that was. And this one is made in the Philippines. And no offense to the Philippines, but theirs were considered the knockoffs. And the Hawaiian ones are the ones that people really collect because people are into Hawaiiana. This looks like Holly. Lefton. Oh, yeah. A different version of Lefton Holly. People are used to the 60s version. But this is the older Lefton mark from, I believe, the late 50s. All the edges are hand-painted on this. It's cute enough. I have to say the initial view looks like a bunch of really uninteresting cookware. I shouldn't say uninteresting. I mean, people who do new reselling are going to watch this video and go, why aren't you picking out that? People buy those. That cookware is all clad or some good brand, but it's just not my thing. We all have to decide what we want to sell and I like antiques and vintage. So dog figurines, here's a good why and why not. This one, yes, it's English, it's painted well, it is more lifelike, people like that. This Scotty, it's cute, it's also English, it's later. Cooper Craft is from the 70s, this is probably from the 50s. This is plastic and the ears are chipped, that's a no. John Beswick. This is a fairly late Beswick piece, but Beswick was really well known for having artists go out in the field and really study animals and make lifelike images of them. So the fact that it's that and has the tag means that there's still going to be a customer for this. Even though a lot of these don't sell for the big money they used to, a lot of them still sell and they're easy to ship. So if you're a reseller, it's something to look for. 
This poor little guy has a huge scar on his face. He's Soraka wood from the 1930s and kind of cheap and not well made. Little metal Scotty, just cute, no big deal. This guy's probably Japanese yeah, or a small American pottery. This one with the stacking ash trees is cute. Now I think this is an 80s thing. Let me take a... There was interest in Art Deco revival in the 80s and so you see a lot of stuff that looks Art Deco-y and Scotty's were a big Art Deco theme. And in fact, on the bottom it says SDD, which I believe is Sarsaparilla Designs, 1981. So yep, indeed, it is 1980s. And that's good to know because they're very cute. And 80s is vintage, so you can sell this on Etsy and you can sell this on eBay and you can sell it to a lot of people. And I think it's cute. But you will notice it's lightweight, it's a little flimsy, it's not as good quality as the older vintage pieces from the 30s. However, I don't think that sarsaparilla really ever copied things they made things inspired by the old days so i don't think that there's anything that's really a fake repro by them and i'm sure people are starting to collect them because it's been 30 some years and they did do good work the glass swans are what they call lamp work where someone bends glass and glass rods and fuses them together it's a very cute little set sometimes these are european and have a mark or they're Chinese Peking glass. These feel heavy like Peking glass. These are elegant depression glass, nice floral etch, and imagine if they had red wine in them. Look how the pattern came out as soon as I held it against dark color. That's when elegant clear glass is really very nice and is indeed elegant. So it's starting to really be a bargain to collect and if you're setting up house or you want to do a bridal toast or something like that you may want to consider adding elegant glass to your house there's a couple different patterns here and then this is oh it's lennox lennox in the bellevue pattern bellevue spelled like the suburb of Seattle. Elegant glass candelabra. Here's another set of china. This is Noritake and this is marked Kalei. Now this is marked made in Japan. Let's see here. Noritake over the M. The M stood for Moramura Brothers. A lot of Noritake only has the M in the wreath. And that's because they knew they were getting into hot water over the difficulties between Japan and the United States. Well, when the war started, the Moramura brothers in New Jersey had to shut down because they had no product anymore. And that was the end of Noritake till after the war. I've got to tell you, I get called all the time about post-war Noritake patterns. They are worth very little money, generally speaking, right now because people don't entertain that way for the most part anymore. But the pre-war patterns, which this is, marked made in Japan, are considered more desirable. And the red mark is considered to be the better of the two factories. The green mark was apparently where people started, and then the red mark was where they were sent if they got really good at their craft. Ooh, and here's a funky mirror. I'm going to have to turn the camera to the side because I don't want to pick it up. See if you can see that without seeing me. So it's a bunch of storks and stuff. It looks like something that would have been in a Chinese restaurant in the early 80s. In fact, I'm sure I saw one at the Golden Star in Bremerton, Washington. Another set or two of silver flatware, which is silver plate. Those sets are nice. They don't sell for a ton, though. Uh, if you're interested in one, you can usually get a pretty nice set for around $100 in the antique market now. On the right is the Colorado pattern of glass with that little bullet in the middle of the feathered foot. On the left, these pieces, if you were here and you felt this with me, you'd feel an oily greasiness to it. These are reproductions. They don't do the same kind of annealing now 
that leaves a dry feel as they used to back then. So this is a fake, probably 1990s. Florence figurines, that is from California. I always thought they were pretty. They sort of don't sell like they used to because figurines in general are down, but I still buy them if they're priced right. This piece with the cloisonne and brass is very heavy. It looks like a mid 20th century piece. I do like this set. I've had these sets before. These were hand painted in Italy in the 1960s, always on some sort of a jewel tone glass with the gilding. The flowers are enameled, but you have to be careful. And I just saw here, let's bring this up. The flowers can get chipped away. And once they are, to me, it's not really very viable anymore. Maybe you can see it in that light better. So to me, once the flowers start being, the petals start chipping away, it's not really worth a lot. And so I will leave that, unfortunately. Someone else, it wouldn't really bother them, I'm sure. It will sell to somebody. This is Belique, and it's a green mark, and it's from about 1980. Green marks were between 1946 and about the year 2000. It's the shamrock pattern. Collectible, but not really anything I'm looking to find. Boy, it's fun to be able to look at every single thing. Here's a print block. I've actually had some luck with these. This seems to be an airplane flying at a bunch of people up in Alaska. And it's written backwards, of course, because you would take this and they'd stamp it and then that would go down and press the advertising into the newspaper or whatever it was. So let's see. There are more airplanes per capita in Anchorage than any other city under the US flag. Oh, interesting. And what does this one say? Fun deciphering this backwards. And then this one says, don't look for Eskimos in Anchorage. The, they are seldom seen here. They live along the Bering Sea and coastal areas. <laughs> Well, there you go. I think that's pretty neat. I think I'm going to have to get that. I just, anything that is unusual and strange like this, and especially because it has to do with Alaska, there are a lot of Alaskana collectors in the Northwest, and I believe that this will go to one of them, or an airplane enthusiast that's a cross collectible piece. So, yeah, I'm going to get this. A nice white utility cart from the 1950s. These are another really useful thing for dealers doing shows or dealers doing mall booths because you can get a lot of shelf space in a small area and it's still for sale. It looks cute, it looks period, and if I was smart I would get it. There's also a bunch of green Fiesta here. It looks like in varying condition, but this piece under this pitcher, pitcher's got wear on the edge, but this compote is a hard piece to find. These are the original 1930s colors. This actually might be worth getting because you just don't see this size often at all. And there was a time this would have gone for a few hundred dollars. I don't know what it goes for now. I'm sure less than that. Fiesta isn't as expensive as it used to be, but neither is it cheap. It is very collectible still. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. It takes a while to go through an estate when you're really just looking for everything. Okay, so this house is two stories plus a basement, so let's go upstairs. There's some scrolls. Ooh, it's dark. No, ooh, especially when I turn all the lights off. Where are the lights here? I didn't really get instructions. They just said, come on in and take a look around. Okay. Ta-da. <laughs> Let there be light. So this is the office, and I've got to say, it looks pretty office-y. Okay, so this is a bedroom with a rather attractive group of furniture. That's a nice 1920s or 30s walnut with the burled top. Hmm. Yeah, a nice American piece. The balloon chair on the left is probably from about 1900 or 1910. That's just a print. 
the brass cheval mirror i mean i have to be honest i think some of this 70s brass really looks cheap and it feels cheap because it was really thin because it kind of was cheap but the style is good and people do like mirrors and people like brass again so it probably would sell but now that i've denigrated it in front of all of you i don't think i can buy it nice mahogany table with the sheraton poles but again very traditional and very good quality, good condition. I mean, all of this is nice if you can use it. The dresser's the best looking piece, in my opinion. The fact that it has a mirror means it should sell first. I've noticed with this gold dresser stuff that the roses are a good motif. And this one seems pretty substantial. It doesn't seem tinny, so that might be a good piece. And I, oh, and it's got brush and comb. Yeah, I think that might be something to get because those little sets do well for me. Oh, and look, these look like they are sterling silver. Let's see if we can find a mark. Uh, okay. Well. I think think I will look at this with a jeweler's loop later because I could be looking and looking but they look tarnished in a way that seems like it would be sterling and it's rubbing off with my finger that's a pretty good basic test um, I mean silver plate can do that too I suppose a couple of little quarters lamps Well, that was it for upstairs. Not a big upstairs, but that's okay. Down we go. Woo! This is the part where the murderer shoves you down the stairs. I am in a house by myself at night, and who knows, perhaps it's haunted and I don't realize. Okay, we'll find out in a minute what lurks in the basement. Looks like a hole. But actually, it seems like it's okay. You just have to make sure not to step on anything. This is just the way this house was left. These are pretty cool. Wooden. South Asian, it looks like. Probably too new for me, but they're neat. Okay, so, wow. Bunch of soft goods. More regular clothes. Yeah, I'm not really here for the clothes anyway. There are some snazzy blue sequin shoes down here that I think would look kind of neat in a display, but I don't know if they're very old. They are from Brass Plum. That was part of Nordstrom. It's actually been a while. They're probably 80s. Uh, hmm. Kind of cute. If they're in decent condition, they might be a buy. Those actually might fit into what I do for vintage fashion. I mainly do accessories. I don't usually do shoes because sizes vary, but you know, now with online selling, it's a lot easier to get rid of them if you have an odd size. So I think I might take those. Let's see if anything's in this cabinet. Let's step over all these puzzles. I like the blue glass mirror. That's probably from the 40s. I bet it used to be a tabletop. Hmm. Well, there's barware, which I like, but that's a very bland kind of medicine or uh, ice bucket oh this is an old stereo cool I know it's so hard to see I wish I had better light in here but that's the dial and you can see there Magnavox so I'll step back from it maybe you can see it a little better that way I apologize that we don't have better light for this but it is truly me being in an estate sale house at night when they're just beginning to even start to get this together here's a 1920s sideboard these are so well made and they're just big is the thing this is a six footer there's a lot that are five feet the five feet sell better than the six feet for most people six feet is just too much we have some 70s 80s deco pieces here that are Artist signed Art Deco number 
see this is uh, some publication in 1977 and that's the artist who did the cover and then this one is an antique auto show these are both going to be circa 1980 deco revival things this one is 1978 Lincoln Road Miami Beach there is a really good fun weekend flea market slash vintage show on Lincoln Road in Miami Beach every Sunday I believe okay I see something here I like I'm sure some of you are saying quit it you're passing by things too fast but I can't show everything I'd be here for hours okay this is a studio glass piece I'm betting there's the base I think it has more age than it looks like this might be 19 late 70s early 80s again kind of in keeping with this sort of little deco fest that we have going on here it doesn't have a name that I can see oh trick dog here is a reproduction of an 1890s bank and I love how they don't even this is how good quality it is look at the cover on this isn't that great I mean have I been drinking I don't think so <laughs> trick dog bank and everything's printed yeah he's he's shaking all right which is really funny because that's not the part that actually moves on this so yes a very high quality product do not be fooled by imitators Gomco overflow valve now I know because I have as a bedside table an old Gomco cart that this is medical equipment 1950s 60s era this is in really great shape I'm not sure what the overflow valve would do it seems to flow into something that has never been it feels like a glass bottle that's never been out of its sleeve so I think I'm gonna leave it that way you know weird medical stuff like this has potential to sell and this thing looks like it's never been used so it might actually even be functional and that might be a different customer oh here we go a little bit of Christmas very little bit cute Merry Christmas ornament there a couple of nice hand-painted ornaments nothing really too important though box of slides there are people who collect slides other people's travel slides sometimes they're looking for things that are there no more there's a fairly famous case a couple of years ago I know there was a movie based on a woman whose photographic work she apparently was somebody's nanny in New York I wish I could remember this full story but apparently she was a terrible nanny but she was a great photographer in her spare time and when she died they found all of this stuff and this guy published it and it turned out that she was this really awesome artist who never really got to enjoy the calling it her lifetime but is now posthumously famous okay we're going to wiggle our way through here into the last room this is the garage slash basement slash tool shed slash repository of stuff this oscilloscope is in great shape and it's got a $50 price tag on it and I have sold them at estate sales for $50 pretty regularly when I've had them people actually use them they sell pretty well online you know they're big to ship but it's a big heavy thing it'll get there in one piece $10 each that's pretty good on these wood planes I look for Stanley and of course if you see tools marked keen cutter or Winchester those are valuable as well because those uh, keen cutter was Simmons hardware that was their brand name considered very high quality I do some tools I'm not seeing anything wait a second now I'm seeing something I like hmm here we go these are old Stanley tools Stanley rule and level company number 24 okay now look at condition this guy's got a little bit of a chunk out of him in the handle 
the rest of it's pretty good and it's got the blades and it's got the screws so it's all there now this one next to is this the same no this is a number 23 and this one's in better condition because the handle doesn't have any damage they're nice looking and they all do different things. They all were meant to sand different things in different ways. The fact that this has this groove along the edge means it was probably supposed to ride over so that you could hone down the middle of some piece of wood or assemblage. I'll have to find out exactly what that was. I think those might be winners. At least the one that is in perfect condition I think I'll take. And then let's see there's a little red handyman tool sometimes they say bailey that was an associate of stanley and that actually is a good thing oh here's a nice old one okay this one's pretty cool i believe this is also a stanley stanley are probably the best known in woodworking planes and woodworking planes are probably the most collected tools S-T-A-N-L-E-Y around the handle. This one's all metal. Stanley Rule and Level out of Connecticut. This one is a number 118. A little hard maybe to see. I'll try to bring it in closer. You have to look all over sometimes to find the marks, but that's number 118. And I have a feeling this is a good one. It's got an unusual mechanism here that is meant to adjust the amount of uh, pitch to the blade when it strikes the object it appears and there must be a reason for that I am not a woodworker so I can't tell you why it's designed that way but a woodworker could and a woodworker might want a piece like this so let me put it where it can be seen better that oh yeah look at it dance that is a good plane, and I think I would like to have that. And then next to it here, randomly, I don't know why these are here, but here is a pair of cactus bookends. I'm going to put them where you can see them, because these are neat. Saguaro cactus. I think that's going to have to go with me, that set right there, because it's western and it's bookends, and I like all that stuff. Okay, here's one more stop on the way out. I thought I only saw power tools up here, but I actually see some more woodworking planes. And here's one that says Bailey. Bailey was associated with Stanley. This is going to be 19 teens. And this is a nice big one, a wood base. So we'll take a look at that. The one next to it is similar. And then we've got some Oilers. And people like these now. They're pretty collectible. And the one I like and would like to get, it's not perfect, but it's got a pretty good label. Looks like from about 1910 or 15. Standard Household Lubricant. Standard Oil Company, California. You know, it's not in great condition. It's probably about a number four or five on a 10 point scale. But it's a lubricating oil of the highest quality for all household use. Feels like there might be stuff in it still. But it's got this interesting screen adaptation on the nozzle. Like it would have screwed onto something or clipped onto something or been to pour into some other way and strain the oil. So this is interesting to me and I will take it. This might be one of the most important things I ever tell you in a video. So please do listen to this. If you see these out in the marketplace, these are Red Comet, and Red Comet is a fire extinguisher. It hung on this cute little clip, Red Comet Automatic, made in Littleton, Colorado. Might be kind of hard to see, but that's not really the point. The point is, is that you see these in the States. They were fire extinguishers. You threw it at the base of the flame, the glass broke, and the chemical or water sprayed all over it. If they're the water kind, they're completely fine. If they're the chemical kind, one of the chemicals that was effective was something that actually sucked all the oxygen out of the room. It can kill you if it breaks in a room that you're in. That's why I have these outside on the porch and I'm going to leave a note for my friend to tell her that these are potentially extremely dangerous and not to have them in the house. So please take warning. If you see Red Comet, not all products were made safer than they are today. Don't assume that this is okay to have. We are the Lilliputians. <laughs> Gulliver came and visited us, but then we ate him. 
So, you can buy us, because what the heck, nothing's left. Hello, it's Mrs. Doubtfire, kitties. <laughs> so, here's the pile of stuff I got. This turned out to be a pretty fun place to look, and I am going to have some fun, cool stuff for my spaces and my next show, and a few things might go online, so we'll uh, keep you abreast of that. I got the National Park Blackfeet Indian prints by uh, Weinhold Reese that I showed you earlier, and the Blue Mountain Pottery Angelfish was just too good to pass up. I like the Fiesta console set because this is the original green color from the 1930s, and you don't really see this set all together very often. It was not really part of the regular dinnerware line, so people back in the Depression couldn't really afford it. Um, for you kids who haven't seen one of these before, it's a bone, and it's really hard to put in your pocket. And it worked like that. And then we've got these Space Alien salt and pepper shakers, probably from the 80s. Let's see if that can get out. Can those be seen? Okay, there we go. Yeah, I think they're European. They have an SFS mark on them. I think that's Sweden. And while we're uh, doing the arm stretch here, I got some cool Alaskan pieces. Uh, I noticed at the last minute these marine ivory pieces, the, uh, and these are earlier, like 1960s approximately, and so they're legal to sell. And this is the Inuit with the seal, there's a walrus, and this one is, I can't really tell exactly, it's some totemic figure that almost looks like cats. And then in keeping with that theme, I got this piece because it's Yadro. The crazy thing is I'll probably take all the Alaska stuff with me to Florida because people down there like it. I think a lot of people go there uh, from their go to Alaska on vacation for cruises in the summertime, so it's something they enjoy. Um, speaking of that, I got two of the Stanley Plains. There's still some really good ones down there left for other people, but I really like these two, so I picked them up. Uh, this one particularly, the all-metal one with the gearing on the side that you can see there is a different kind of plane. I looked up what they're called and I should remember. I'll have to write it on, down and put it in a listing or something. Also on the tool shelf at the last minute, there were all these grease and oil cans and people like these now. And then I saw this one and it's got advertising for standard oil. So that's like Chevron nowadays and this is from probably 1910 it says standard household lubricant standard oil of california so i thought that was pretty neat it's not in great shape but the graphics are good enough and uh it's all there it's got the good spout and everything and then i like bookends and i like 50s western and this is, set is both of them so that had to go and one other thing i wanted to show is this lamp because it's from the 50s but it's got this really great female form in it when you turn it sideways you realize and she's scantily clad and she's really got a gracefulness to her and is very modernist and I thought she looked great with uh, no shade I doubt she was made to have a shade actually it'd just be a torsier to go up to the ceiling so I thought that was really great and I can't wait to take this stuff and show you in my next show you'll probably recognize some of the pieces but wait there's more <laughs> one more thing i forgot to show you had to get this this is just great these are the bar hounds this is going to date from the mid 60s and it's just super cool i like barware i like comic stuff people love dogs it's really kind of the perfect thing for right now so Thanks for joining us. Uh, please subscribe, hit the like button, uh, make comments, share this with your friends, all that good stuff, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!